Hi everyone, my name is Miss Bayati. I work here full time in the Sim Lab. I'm the Nursing Sim Lab Technical Assistant. Um, I wanted to kind of show you what in the inside of the Sim Lab look like. So before you come here, you kind of know what to expect to see. Please make sure you watch this whole video before you come for your orientation day. Um, as we won't have enough time to really show you all of this, I'll give you some reminders, but if you can make sure that you are watching this, um, it would be really good. The first thing I want to show you is the med room. Um, this will actually be in the hallway during your simulation lab day. Um, for today, it's going to be here in the room, but I just kind of kind of show you what the equipment is. So kind of in the hospitals or even in some other facilities, you might have a specific room to prepare your meds with. So that's what we kind of do for you in the hall, give you a little space to prepare meds. Um, the first thing I'll show you is the IV cart over here. Um, you'll see different drawers for each patient. You'll, you might see these at the facilities too. They have a barcode with the patient's first and last name and date of birth. And they're just a little drawer that comes out like this. And if there's any medications, like for this patient, it's a little inhaler, um, you can get it from here. There's also a glucometer at the top. Uh, sometimes, lately because of COVID, we have been just not simulating a glucose check, but if you do need to do that, this is where you would do it. We also have an IV tray at the top as well. Um, you won't need this right now. At some point, you might in your last semester of nursing school, you'll be starting IVs and doing blood draws, and this is kind of what we use to get all of that pre uh, prepared. Uh, over here is the pharmacy inbox. So that is if the pharmacy sends up a medication that you have to administer, it'll be in the pharmacy inbox. Things like antibiotics sometimes come up from the pharmacy and they would be in here. In the simulation lab too, we don't expect you to know everything. You do have prep work that you will have to do ahead of time that you'll be able to pull out of your pocket and look at um, at any time during the scenarios. But we also have resources available for you. So on the med cart, we always have drug books here, IV drug book, regular um, drug book, um, whatever drug book that you use for your curriculum, it'll be here on the IV cart. Um, and you can use that anytime during the scenarios if you need. The first drawer of the IV cart, you'll find things like flush syringes. Here in the simulation lab, we use pre-filled flush syringes, which means they are full of normal saline already, or water in our case. Um, so they're wrapped in a wrapper. You'll have to open them up like this. You'll have to take the lid or the cap off. There's a little air bubble. You'll have to pull back on the plunger, pull forward, and prime it. And you'll learn more about this in semester two. You won't really need to learn about this right now. I'm just showing you. So that's what we have here in the sim lab. And obviously you wouldn't put this back in here. We also have more syringes as well, alcohol prep pads in the bag if you need them. All the drawers are labeled as well, so you'll know what's in them. The second drawer we have here, we have bags of IV fluids. We also have primary tubing and secondary IV tubing. I recognize some of you may not even know what that means at this point. Um, next semester you'll learn more about that, but that's what that is. Okay. This third drawer has more IV fluids as well. Some of these bags are bigger. Same thing with the last drawer, just more IV fluids. All right, here. You probably won't need to use this for your Sim Lab orientation day coming up, but next semester you might, and in your third and fourth semesters in Sim Lab, you will. So that's the IV cart. Over here, we have the Pixis. You should be familiar with the Pixis. You have these same ones in the practice labs. Um, same procedures apply with getting medications out. We also have a scanner that you have to scan your medications out. You're going to follow the same policy. And I left a little barcode out to kind of show you. Sometimes we have these barcodes in the Pixis drawers to scan, or you can scan the vials, um, whatever works there, okay? Now over here, we have the WOW. Again, they're the same ones that are in the practice lab. Here in the Sim Lab, we usually leave the patient's chart up so that you know where you're starting. 
I know you wouldn't do that on a real patient, but for our purposes here, so you're not clicking all around my screen and deleting files, because that has happened sometimes, we leave it open. Um, same thing applies, though. You would follow the steps of an eval. Um, you would uh, scan the patient's name band, which they will have. Um, you would scan the medication as well. Um, you would follow all your steps. Um, we usually have a calculator on here and some scrap paper if you need to do some medication calculation, some sanitizer as well. If you need to give any pills, we have little pill cups. Um, some more alcohol prep pads. Um, for this cohort of SimLab, we left little barcodes on this sheet of paper in lieu of those small ones, so it's just whatever's here. Um, and here's the keyboard. Some of you have asked, where is the keyboard? Here it is. Um, so we have some needles here in this first drawer when you're taking meds out of the vials. 5 ml syringes, 10 ml syringes. The second row is all insulin syringes um, for when you're giving insulin. They're just various units. The third row, some more of those pre-filled flush syringes. We also have needles and syringes all in the same bag to make it easier. The last row, tuberculin syringes and ampule breakers. You don't really need those anymore, but they're here. Um, so that is the extent of the wow that you'll need. There's also a sharps container on the side. We just ask that any syringes, whether they be from the flush syringes um, or a syringe with a needle on it, go in the sharps container. Same thing with vials, all vials, once you're done with them, you can put them right in the sharps container. So the way we do medications in the sim lab, we do them over real time. So we do it just like you would a real medication. Um, you would take the medication out of the vial if you're doing IV medication, or if you're doing a pill, you would take it out of the package and put it in the cup once you've scanned it, and we follow all those steps. Uh, you want to make sure you're telling your patient what the medication is, how quickly it's going to work, any side effects. You want to make sure you're telling them ahead of time all of that information. And that should all be on your prep work, so you'll be able to pull it out of your pocket and look at it if you need to when you're giving meds. Um, and just to remind you, um, I didn't say it earlier, but um, this is not an evaluation. Here in the Sim Lab, it's all about teamwork. It's all about improving your nursing practice. Um, so if you, you forget a step of your medication administration, you'll have a team to kind of help you. You'll be able to have someone say, oh, don't forget to ask for allergies, or don't forget that, um, to take the pill out of the package and put it in the cup. You know, don't forget that. Uh, so you won't be on your own. So just remember that. Um, and same thing with medications. If the onset of action is 30 minutes, if it takes 30 minutes to work, it's going to take 30 actual minutes here in the sim lab to work as well. So just remember that. Over here, I want to show you, um, this is the fridge. So if you need anything like insulin we have in here, we have an ice pack in here if you need that as well. Um, that's where that will be. Over on this computer, um, this is a document or workstation. So when you come to SimLab, you'll have different roles. Um, I'll go over that when you come here, but basically there will be a few of you at the bedside taking care of the patient. There will be some of you preparing meds, and then there will be someone sitting here documenting with the patient's chart. So our charting we use is Microsoft Excel right now, and there's different boxes that you can check in or click in, I'm sorry, and type. And that's how you'll do your charting. This chart is a blank slate, so there's different tabs on the bottom. Not every tab is going to apply for your patient. So your patient you're going to be taking care of might have constipation, and that is um, something that you'll have to do a focused abdominal assessment on. Uh, you won't need to fill out everything under the neurologic assessment tab here. So just what applies. Um, on the chart here. And we'll go over that a little bit more in depth later. Um, and then I'll take you over to the bedside and show you some more things over there. All right, so this is the bedside. This is where you'll be when you're taking care of the patient. So um, welcome to the bedside. These are our patient simulators. They are very expensive, very high tech, but they do a lot. Um, the concept of simulation is to give you that real life experience without the real life consequences. So 
We have patient simulators that look like a human, they breathe like a human, they blink like a human, um, but the voice that comes out of their mouth is not a robot, it's actually mine. So my voice will come out of their mouth and I'll be talking to you as the role of the patient. So just wanna show you a couple things. Usually we have the equipment around that you need for scenarios somewhere in your vicinity. It's not a scavenger hunt, so we don't want you looking all over for things. On the bedside table, we usually have a patient gown if they're an emergency room patient and they're not in a gown right now, which this one isn't. Um, any towels, washcloths. Um, we have water in a cup as well. Uh, we don't actually put water in a cup and put it down the mannequin's mouth because that wouldn't work very well. But we simulate it. Um, we have emesis basins. If your patient during the simulation is nauseous, you can give them an emesis basin. Over here is a little metal container at the head of the bed here. Uh, we have telemetry leads. You'll learn more about those in semester three uh, and where to put them and whatnot. But those make the heart rate display on the screen kind of like it is right now. Uh, that's what the telemetry leads will do. I just put it on the screen so you can see it. The other thing we have is a pulse ox. This can go on any finger on the mannequin. We'll do it this way. And on the screen, it'll display your pulse ox. So um, any finger will work. So I'm going to put that back in here. And that's where we keep this. OK. Over here is our thermometers. You should be familiar with these at this point. Uh, you basically just take the probe out. You can put the probe cover on. And sometimes it'll beep before you even put it in the mannequin's mouth. That's okay. Still simulate it that you're going to put the thermometer under the patient's tongue. And you would explain it to your patient. You would say, okay, Mr. Hansen, I'm going to check your temperature now. I'm just going to put this under your tongue. When you do that, a number will display on the thermometer. This one says 98.5. That is your temperature. Some thermometers work up to a number. This one just, just displays it. So that'll be there. And then you can take your probe cover and put it right in the trash where it belongs. <laughs> then you can put it right back in here and on the container at the bedside. Um, over here at the head of the bed, we have oxygen tubing. So I have cameras that I'm able to see you and hear you during scenarios. Some things on my cameras are hard to see. Oxygen tubing is one of them. It's clear so it blends in. If you're putting your patient on oxygen, you can actually put it on the patient, put it around their ears. Sometimes it doesn't stay very well because of the mannequins and that's okay. And you're going to simulate that you're turning the oxygen up. Um, you won't actually see the ball go up like you normally would, but simulate it here uh, so we know. Um, we have medical air, we have suction, we have um, ambu bags as well and things like that. We also have, um, IV pumps, the same ones that you have in the labs. I know you haven't really done a lot with IV pumps at this point. You will next semester. So those are the kinds that we have here. Um, and I'll take this off of him for now. So as you can see, you probably have saw at some point during me talking, the mannequins do blink once they're turned on. Um, and that usually is something that get past. So just FYI, when you come here, that's something you will see. They also have lung sounds, both anteriorly and posteriorly. They are very heavy, so if you need to listen to posterior lung sounds, there needs to be at least three of you to help lift the mannequins up or roll them over because they're very heavy. Um, but you'll be able to auscultate lung sounds, uh, and you can hear different ones. You know, you'll be able to hear wheezes, ronchi, crackles, anything like that. They also have an apical pulse that you can auscultate with your stethoscope. Remember, you're going to go underneath and do skin the stethoscope. Uh, you'll be able to listen for that. Blood pressure you can check on the mannequins as well. We use their blood pressure cuff, not yours, um, because it's programmed to a certain blood pressure. So on their arm, there is a little flat spot about here where you could put your stethoscope and listen for the blood pressure. You should be able to hear it pretty loud, too, on these mannequins. They also have radial pulses. Their pulses are going to be a little higher than ours are. They're going to be a little soft spot that you'll feel. 
If you press too hard on that soft spot, you're going to obliterate the pulse. If you lightly palpate, you should be able to feel it, which I do right now. Um, same thing on the other side. They have radial pulses on both sides. This patient, all of them have wristbands too. So you'll be able to do that. Um, all IVs on our patients have to be on the right arm because the left arm has electronics in it. So this right arm, um, you can put IV fluids in here. Once you do IV meds next semester, uh, you'll be able to put them right in there. And we do something called moulage in the sim labs where we give uh, our patients bruises or wounds or anything like that. This patient here has a little bruise on his elbow. So it's just kind of something that we do here to make it a little bit more realistic, if you will. They also have um, uh, abdominal bowel sounds. So you'll be able to auscultate those when you come into the sim lab with your stethoscope. Um, some assessments on the mannequins, you aren't going to get a true result because of the plastic. So you're going to hear that dullness whenever you do your percussion, which you're not going to percuss like that. You're going to do your percussion like this, but you're going to hear that dull sound every time because it's plastic. So we don't want you to make up any assessment results. You're always going to have a faculty member in the room with you, whether it be me or Mrs. Strasburg or somebody else. Uh, and you'll ask them what is the result supposed to be, and they'll tell you um, for some of those assessments. Same thing with cap refill, skin turgor, just ask them for the result. Do the assessment, simulate, you know, I'm going to check your cap refill, I'm going to check your skin turgor, and then ask for the result, and they'll tell you. Okay? Um, you'll notice that the side rails are down. We keep the side rails down here in the sim lab. It just got really cumbersome with lifting them up, putting them down. We just leave them down during the scenarios. We're going to assume they're up when you need them up, down when you need them down. Um, and same thing with the call light. We're going to assume that patients have their call lights whenever they need it. I just want to also show you down here pedal pulses on the feet. Um, they're going to be kind of in the middle of the feet. Same principle. There's a soft spot. If you press too hard, you're going to shut the pulse off and move the foot. <laughs> but if you lightly palpate, then you'll be able to um, feel that pedal pulse on both feet. Um, if you want to put the head of the bed up, I know you can't see it from there, but there's a little yellow lever in the corner of the head of the bed. If you kind of grab it like this, you'll be able to pull up the head of the bed super easy. Uh, we just ask that one of you does that because if more than one of you does that, at the same time, somebody's fingers might get pinched. It's happened before, so just one of you lift the head of the bed. Um, and putting it back down, same thing. Just squeeze that yellow lever in, push it down, and the head of the bed will go down. On the side of the bed, kind of towards the floor, there's a little foot pump. If you press on that, step on that foot pump, it'll raise the height of the bed. Make sure you're doing this to save your back, especially when you're checking blood pressure and whatnot. We don't want to see any arching backs, so just make sure you're adjusting the height. If you want to put the bed back down, which you should be before you're leaving to put them in the lowest locked position, you're going to put your foot underneath that pedal, lift up, and the bed should come easily down. Okay. The last couple of things I want to show you are... Um, during scenarios, we give you different roles. So like I said earlier, there'll be some of you at the bedside doing assessments. There'll be some of you getting me medications prepared. There'll be somebody documenting on the chart. Then you might see somebody sitting over here on the side of the bed in one of these chairs. And it'll be one of your peers, somebody in your group. That will be a support person. So patients usually have a support person with them, or sometimes I should say have a support person with them. That could be a family member, that could be a friend, that could be a stranger. I mean, we don't know who it is. So we put those in our scenarios so that you can find out who they are and interact with them. Um, we teach you kind of how to handle that. So uh, that's who that would be. Um, also over here on the walls, we have a sharps container up there and medium-sized gloves on the walls. But if you need any other sizes than medium, we have small, large, and extra large. You can just ask the faculty member that's in the room with you uh, that day of your simulation to get those. So um, 
that is the really extent of all of the equipment in here. Um, if uh, during your scenario you need to do anything else, like a suppository, you can actually do that as well. We have lubricant we can use. You can actually, we'll show you where to put that on the mannequins. Um, and like I said, with pills as well, you want to follow the same principles as you would a real patient. You know, you would want their head of the bed up when you're giving them a pill. You would want to tell them what the pill is, what it's for, and then you would want to simulate that you're giving them that pill. Um, so you want to keep it real as much as possible. I recognize that it's not something typical um, that you're you know, used to working with the mannequins, but if you can, we say here in the Sim Lab, embrace the plastic. If you can embrace the plastic of the mannequins, get past the fact that they blink, and you know, a little, at first it's a little creepy, but if you can get past that and really embrace it, you'll have a really rich learning experience. And after every Sim Lab day, me and the simulation faculty will give you personalized feedback on how it went. And we're not scoring you, evaluating you on how you do in the sim lab. We're basing any, any um, points or anything like that, we always base that off of your prep, off of your participation, and your professionalism. We don't base any type of thing on your performance here because this is a safe place to make mistakes. So that's what this is all about. You'll have a great experience when you come in. I can't wait to meet all of you. Please email me if you have any questions. Please, please make sure you watch this before you come. Watch it over again if you need to. And when you come, um, it'll be good. So take care.